Hello everyone, this is Mr. of Help, and today we're going to travel to ancient Egypt. Well, not so much travel to ancient Egypt, but we are going to talk about pyramids, so that's almost the same thing. <laughs> Such a funny guy. Okay, uh, a pyramid. Um, you probably know what a pyramid is, what it looks like, uh, but just want to define it clearly. So the pyramids you're used to seeing look like this one here, uh, which has a square base and then a bunch of triangular faces that all meet at one point up here at the top, which you might have guessed we call the vertex. You can, you can see that here. Whoops. Uh, didn't have my correct tool. There, the vertex. Um, but by definition, a pyramid doesn't have to have a square base. It could have an octagonal base. What makes it a pyramid is that it has a, a, a base that's a polygon, and then all the other uh, vertices connect at one point. So you take all the corners of whatever that base is, and they all meet at one top point. Um, and so those are your lateral edges, which are the edges of the faces, the lateral faces, which are always triangles in a pyramid. Right? In our prisms, they were always rectangles because we had a polygon on the top and bottom, so there were four sides. But now all those fat faces are triangles because all these things meet up here at this one point. So we get that triangular face and then the other triangular faces. Um, okay, so that's, that's a pyramid. Um, a regular pyramid, which is the kind that we're going to study in this class, that's the kind we're going to look at, uh, is just one where the base is a regular polygon and also where all those triangles are congruent. So all the symmetry that you think of with a pyramid, you can assume that. The triangles, I'm sorry, the pyramids that we're going to be looking at in, in, in this class will all be like that. So what that means is this vertex here is going to be directly above the center of that square on the bottom. Okay, um, some other vocabulary in this. You really have to pay close attention to the vocab in this unit because there's a lot of different parts to a pyramid. It's probably the hardest one to, to really follow, so, so make sure you take good notes here. So there's the altitude or the height of a pyramid, which is literally straight down from the vertex, so straight down. That's the altitude or the height. The height is the measure of the altitude. But then we have the height of the triangle, which is this right here. That's called the slant height. Right? It's a height that's slanted. Right, Makes sense. Math people like to have names that make sense. It's the slant height. Um, and then, you know, we have our lateral edge. We already talked about that in the last side right there. Um, and the base edge. I think I forgot to mention that before, but the base edge is just the edge of the basis. And that's vocab we've seen from, from before. Okay. Um, one of the really interesting things that you're going to watch out for, because we're going to use this a lot, in pyramids is there are right triangles everywhere and some of them are a little tricky to see so I'm going to walk you through uh, the ones that tend to show up a lot and that we tend to need to use so you can imagine there's going to be a lot of Pythagorean theorem going on there's going to be maybe some 30 60 90 or even some trig possibilities with uh, pyramids so the first right triangle that we're going to see is made up of the slant height so I'm going to just sort of highlight one of them there's a slant height. Half the base edge, so I mean this whole base edge is being split in half by that slant height in the triangle. So that's half the base edge. And then the lateral edge is the hypotenuse. So you see that is actually a right triangle because the slant height is an altitude in that face. It's an altitude of that right triangle. I'm sorry, of the triangular face. So if you picture PDC, that's P. DC, that's that face that I'm working with there. If you drop the altitude down, it's going to be perpendicular. It's going to split both into congruent parts, all the things that we've seen before. Okay, so triangle PDR here is a right triangle with those two legs, and PD is the hypotenuse. Okay. Uh, the next right triangle we're going to look at is made up of the height. Now, the height of the pyramid is the straight up and down again, so that's PQ. The apothem, remember that base is a regular polygon, it's a regular quadrilateral or a square, so the, it has an apothem. And then the slant height, so in this right triangle, notice the slant height is the hypotenuse. Okay. Then there's another one which is made up of the height, a radius of the square, which remember goes from that center 
to one of the vertices of the square, and then the lateral edge, which would be the hypotenuse in that right triangle. So that's another right triangle that shows up. And another one that shows up only because this is a square base, um, which is in the base, there's a radius, and there's a radius, and that's the hypotenuse. And this is actually, since those are both radii, this is actually an isosceles right triangle or a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay, so those are some of the right triangles that you need to be aware of in pyramids. Now let's look at our formulas. Um, again, trying to connect this back to, um, you know, what we did with, with um, prisms. It was one half the perimeter of the base times the height, but now it's the slant height. So you see that the lateral area is just one half the perimeter of the base, so around the, the base, times the slant height. And you'll notice we use kind of a script L is usually what we use. Um, so usually that's the term that we use to represent slant height. So you should make sure you have that in your notes. Uh, just like everything else we've done, to find the total surface area, we take that lateral area that we just found up here, and add the area of the base, which in this case is a square, so that's a pretty straightforward calculation. If that base was a regular hexagon, then you might have to use some 30, 60, 90, or some other things to help you find the area, but we'll get to that later. And then volume, volume of a pyramid, uh, and this one's not so intuitive. I could use some calculus to show you where that one-third comes from, but suffice it to say, it's the one-third, the area of the base, which again is the area of that square, times the height. And again, for height, we're not talking slant height, we're talking the actual straight up and down height. So those are your formulas for lateral area, serve total area, and volume. You should have those written down. So we can apply them to this. So let's take a look at this problem. Um, so I've got a pyramid. Uh, I'm given the lateral edge of five centimeters there, so in this one that's PD there, it's five centimeters. The base edge, so this whole thing here is six. Um, so let's find, first of all, L, or the slant height. So the slant height, what we want to do is make a right triangle that I know two out of the three sides of, so I can find the slant height. So notice if I use this right triangle here, the slant height is there, that's one of the legs. And this is half of that base, so that's going to be 3 centimeters. So this is 3 squared plus slant height squared, the other leg, is equal to hypotenuse squared. And hopefully you recognize that as one of our Pythagorean triples. That's a 3, 4, 5. But if you just did the work out, you'd see that the slant height was 4. So that's 4 centimeters. Okay, let's clear this off so we can make some room for some other work here. Okay, the height h, now that I know the slant height is 4, I'm trying to find the height, so again a right triangle with that, the slant height, and then this. Well this distance here, rq in the way that I drew it, since this base is 6 and this piece is 3, this piece is also going to be 3. Um, because this figure here is a rectangle because of all those right angles. A little hard to see, but you see that CS and RQ are the same, so RQ is 3. Here's our H, and again, Pythagorean theorem with that right triangle. 3 squared plus the height squared is equal to 4 squared. Not a Pythagorean triple because the 3 and the 4 aren't the legs. So 16 minus the 9 is 7. So the height is actually the square root of 7 centimeters. I'm going to go ahead and add that up here. Square root of 7 centimeters. Okay. Moving right along. The radius, now the radius isn't shown here, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw it. The radius right there is CQ. Um, and again, this is another sort of hidden right triangle. Right, there's a hidden right triangle, and this is 3 centimeters, and this is 3 centimeters, and that's a right angle. So that's a 45, 45, 90. So CQ, which is the radius, is going to be 3 rad 2. So the radius is 3 rad 2 
centimeters. Okay, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start to do some calculating. So the lateral area, you should have this in your notes, but I'm going to flash back to it quickly. That's one half the perimeter of the base times the slant height. So one half perimeter of the base, which is six, four times, so that's 24, times the slant height, which is four, and so that is half of 24 is 12, times 4 is 48, so that's 48 square centimeters. Then the total area is that 48 square centimeters, plus the area of the base, which is 6 by 6, so that's 36 square centimeters, because that's just a square. So that's 84 square centimeters for the total area. And finally, the volume, which is, the formula is one-third area of the base times the height. Well, area of the base we know is 36 square centimeters. The height is rad 7 centimeters. So one-third of 36 is 12. So that's 12 rad 7 cubic centimeters. And so uh, that's how you would write your answer. Um, if I ask for it as a decimal, uh, you could just put it into your calculator. Let me show you what that would look like. So if I did 12 times the square root of 7, whoops, messed that up. Let's try it again. 12 times the square root of 7 equals, so if it was to the nearest hundredth, that'd be 31.75, because the hundredth is that second place, so 31.75. Okay, um, so if I ask to the nearest hundredth, you'd write 31.75, otherwise 12 rad 7, and that is all for today. Thanks for watching.